Hi everyone, it's a Wednesday afternoon today, so not my usual time to be on, but I thought I'd record a video of critique because I left out quite a few flowers that people had sent in um, during my critique on Tuesday. I had a suspicion that I was missing some, but didn't realize quite how many. So I wanted to do a special video for four people that I didn't critique, um, or I didn't critique their drawings yesterday. So I'd like you to um, have a look at these critiques and you'll learn from it. And hopefully the people that did them will learn from it too. So let's get going. I'm going to just change my system to Photoshop. Okay. So the first person's work that we're going to look at is Deb. And uh, I'm not too full bottle of my flowers, but I'm pretty sure that this is some sort of poppy. And uh, Deb has looked at the shape of those petals beautifully and has seen the, the tone on the, on the petals. So I love how you've seen the dark on, on this, these bits in between here and you've put your lighter petals on top. Um, but what we really need to look at is the foreshortening and that's why I gave you this challenge. And so, um, just put another layer on there. What I want you to pay attention to is have a look at the shape of this photograph. So if you look at that, you can see that it is um, portrait shape. So it's much taller than it is wide. And if you look at your drawing, you have pretty much the opposite. So that's a first clue um, that you may have not got the foreshortening correct. The next thing that is a, a nice clue is um, flowers are very much like saucers or bowls or these kinds of flowers. And we know that they're round. And when you turn a round plate away from you or, or a round flower, you get that oval um, feeling or that oval thing. And if we look at your flower there, yours is still filling the circle. You have observed this oval quite nicely though. So that's quite nice in there. Um, so be careful, use these, um, the general large shapes as a clue. Now, when we look at the petals, we can see the petals on both sides of this flower are foreshortened. So those are moving away from us and these ones are moving towards us because the, the, the flower is pointing up and away from us to the left. And if you actually look at the size, let's say, of that petal there, so that's probably the most foreshortened petal, You've got it nice and foreshortened, probably not quite as narrow as this one, but where you can really see the difference is this underneath petal that I'm coloring in there. Have a look at how big that is. That is smaller, in fact, that distance than the actual petal. And have a look on this side, how big your petal is. So what you've done is you've done exactly what your brain understands petals to be and flowers to be, you've given it a big, big petal. And even these ones here, which aren't quite as foreshortened as this one, you can see that those are much shorter. Now, where the petals are up and down, those are much better on your drawing. So, um, that's the biggest thing to look out for is these shapes of tone. And on Friday for my video, it's going to be a really good one because I'm going to be talk talking about these shapes of tone and um, showing you how you can highlight these petals coming forward and those petals going back. You've done a pretty good job of that. Um, okay, I think my, my stylus pen is running out of battery. So, um, really nice flower. So if I hadn't seen the photograph, 
I would have said that's a great photograph of a po uh, drawing of a poppy. So I wouldn't worry overly much, but from a learning point of view, to get that foreshortening working, that's what you need to pay attention to is these little shapes. So um, well done on, on getting that poppy. Okay, we move to this one now. Unfortunately, that's a little bit um, blurred but I think I can still um, give you, help you with a critique on that. Now, I'm afraid I don't know how to pronounce this gentleman's name. Um, Ore, or um, you've done also a really lovely job of that flower. Um, your foreshortening has uh, worked a little bit as well. So I'll add a layer to that which you can't see but I can see so I can get rid of it so you've done some nice foreshortened petals there so well done for that um, yeah pretty good job especially since the photograph was was a bit blurred if you look at the negative shape as it goes up to this petal here so the negative shape is this stuff here You've probably not made this petal quite big enough, but I'm being a little bit pedantic, uh, a little bit strict. I'm just pointing out some, some things. So don't forget to use these beautiful negative shapes that are between the petals there to help you with the shapes here. Um, but in terms of the foreshortening, that is really working. One of the things I would like to say though, um, and again, this will be very helped um, in our Friday video is I'm going to be speaking to you about putting these strong outlines on drawings and everybody um, that is how we generally draw there's nothing actually wrong with putting outlines on but I do want to point you um, point out some features of what happens when you do put um, outlines on rather than um, putting tones in so you can see you've shaded in those dark tones really well so what that's enabled to happen is that you can see the stems of the flower which is um, so that the stems of the flower are coming out really well here in fact better than the actual photograph because you've put these darks next to those light stems. So that's what I actually want you to do in the body of the, of the flower as well. Um, so I'll show you a bit of that on, in our Friday uh, video. So nice job of that flower there. Okay, Leslie sent in this flower. You can see that it is um, on its side and I've done that so that it can fit and we can see it on our screen there so that uh, makes it easier for me to direct for you okay Leslie commented that she had made some errors I'm not quite sure where her errors are um, I can't see anything that's obvious. Now, this is what I meant when I was um, doing Deb's flower. When we look on at a flower that is totally facing us, so this particular one isn't absolutely circular, or it would be maybe if I'd outlined it a bit better. Um, so you can see that one is facing us completely, and we don't have any foreshortening. So it's working particularly well. It's much easier to do flowers like that. I can see that Leslie, I don't know whether she deliberately looked at the negative shapes or not, but um, she's got some lovely shapes there that help us see the separation of these petals. So that uh, works very well. Um, what else can I say about this? Right, I'm going to talk about the toning of this one as well. Now, in this particular flower, um, 
you can see that the actual color of the flower, that, that bright pink, has created some very strong lines on the edges of the flowers, of the edges of the petals. And so you can see that that's what Lurki has done in her petals. So it's nicely obvious to um, copy these flowers. They're all outlined for you. So in this instance, outlining the, the petals is what the photograph is doing. And that's, that's the style of the, of the flower. So Leslie, I think you've done a lovely job. Um, possibly some of the petals are slightly different shapes. But at the end of the day, you know, so it's probably more like that. It doesn't really matter. And so for all of you, it actually doesn't really matter whether you've got it right or wrong, as long as it looks like a, uh, a beautiful flower. And by right or wrong, I mean, does it look like the photograph? And that is not the criteria that I use for declaring whether something's right or wrong. So um, nobody sees these photographs except me when I'm giving a critique. So uh, I wouldn't worry about it. So um, I think this is lovely. What I will help you with on Friday is probably around the edges of this central um, uh, bit in the middle. We've got some lovely darks and it looks like there's a bit of shadow there, which probably could have been added, but um, it all works pretty well. So um, well done on that, although there was no foresh foreshortening, so you need to practice your foreshortening as well. And our last um, critique is Leslie. No, not Leslie, Stacy. Okay, so Stacy has done um, also a poppy, I think. Oh, it might be a cosmos, actually. Might be a cosmos. Um, and she has indeed chosen one that has got foreshortening. So these petals are coming towards us. Those ones are a little bit more upright there, but you can see these ones have been shortened to that uh, distance instead of that long um, elongation there. So very nicely observed. Um, you've observed the correct shape of these things and you've seen how these shapes here relate to the back shape. So really nicely done. Your foreshortening has definitely worked. Well done. Um, once again, there is quite a lot of um, outlining. So this is one of the reasons why I wanted to do the, the Friday lesson on um, putting shapes of darks and lights in rather than outlining. Um, as I said, it's not wrong. I just want to show you uh, something different. So I can see that you've beautifully observed that these front two flowers petals have got shading on them. So you've put some more shading on and you've left the back ones a little bit uh, lighter. The one thing I will just uh, point out to you is that center of the flower there, can you see that it disappears behind this petal? And all of us do this certainly as beginner drawers. Can you see you've left a very, very faint white space between the edge of your petal there and the, the, the color of that uh, middle bit. So that is a very, very tiny, tiny um, uh, change that you need to start thinking about when things go behind the tone, whatever it is that's going behind, goes right up against that line there. So um, also a really lovely um, cosmos or whatever that flower is. And I applaud you all for putting it on to get drawing. I love seeing this coming through and I will try not to forget anybody next time. So hopefully I'll see you at 3 p.m. on Friday afternoon. That's Perth time. And I'll see you then. Bye-bye.